Hi everyone and welcome. Um, so I've got a request to make a video uh, showing you how the blood effects are spawned uh, in this game, essentially. Uh, so essentially in, in, in this version of my build, um, basically we have a first person controller with a gun. Um, and every time we shoot, a ray cast is spawned from the center of the camera forwards for a few meters. And if that ray cast um, basically hits a collider on an enemy ragdoll, on an enemy ragdoll, then what we get is we get uh, a blood decal, a bullet hole decal, uh, spawning uh, and uh, being spawned exactly on the enemy mesh where he is it. So, for example, if we hit him exactly at the center here, then we'll see a bl bullet hole decal, uh, bl uh, yeah, a red bullet hole decal uh, spawning here which stays attached to the enemy. And then we also see a second thing is spawned, which is an actual blood effect. And the blood effect is essentially a part particle effect where a blood spill spills uh, away from the uh, hole and on the ground. Okay, so there are two different components, basically. But they both get spawned initially at the same position. One uh, one remains attached to the, bo to the body, uh, which is the... the essentially the bullet hole decal, and the other one actually stays on the ground as it, and will not be parented to the body of the enemy, okay? So this is roughly how it works. I'll give you a quick demonstration. So here we got our first player controller. It has no no animations uh, yet, so or just a few. So what happens is that, um, yeah, don't mind, don't mind the animations. So when I see it, uh, it's black decals they are actually coming out from me because they're, the enemies are shooting me. And if I shoot them, the same happens, as you can see. Now I kill the enemy and you can see that there are quite a lot of other blood decals, which are the bullet holes, and they are actually on the enemy body. They're not on the ground, they remain on the enemy body. While all the other, uh, let's say, uh, if blood effects that came out of the of these holes, they remain on the ground. Okay, so there are these two components essentially. Now uh, I want to uh, show you uh, in terms of script how this this all works. Um, basically, we've got two main scripts. One of them is on my uh, player controller, so it's on on this controller, and it's called AI Player Interaction, and this handles the spawning of um, bullet holes and bullet uh, visual effects, essentially. So bullet particles, okay? And then we've got a second um, script, which is important, and it's on my weapon. And um, so it's on, it's on this weapon. Um, and, it's, and the script is called uh, Weapon Automatic. And this handles the shooting, so shooting ray casts, basically, all right? So these are the only two scripts we'll, we'll deal with in this video. So now I will show you how uh, everything is structured from a script point of view. So uh, let's start with the weapon automatic script. So as you can see, we've got the weapon automatic script here and the AI player interaction script here. So as I told you, the weapon automatic script handles all the weapon behavior, but we want to focus on the shooting, okay? So what happens is that uh, basically we've got um, a delegate and a static event. Uh, these two are essentially the most important parts of this script uh, uh, regarding the actual shooting and um, and the spawning of, of bullet holes and bullet decals uh, because essentially what they are, the, the delegate defines a um, blueprint uh, or a signature basically for the event. So it's, it's essentially stating, look, uh, if we are going to make an event, um, it, it needs to take on a uh, raycast hit, and then it also needs to take a integer. Now, the raycast hit will contain information regarding the collider that we hit, basically, and the integer will contain information on the weapon damage. Okay. Then what we do is we build or we make a static event called on shooting. Okay, which has the uh, which is based on this delegate. So it has this signature, essentially. Now, on shooting is an event. So what we want to do is every time we shoot, we want to invoke this event, basically. So what I do is, in this script, 
uh, I have a method called uh, shoot. I've got this method, okay? Now, it doesn't matter how all this method works. The only thing that matters is that you have to keep in mind that when I shoot, uh, these things happen. This set of things happen. So, basically, I shoot a raycast, okay? Or actually, I first I define um, a raycast hit container, okay? Which will contain all the information on the collider that we hit, okay? Then I define array, uh, which is spawned exactly at a position that I define, which is essentially in front of the camera, of the player camera. And then I define a forward direction, which is the direction in which the ray has to travel, which is essentially yeah, forward, basically, from, from the first-person controller. Then uh, I define a bool, uh, and this is essentially the actual shooting of the raycast. And basically, I, I, with this bool, I'm shooting a raycast, and I'm checking if it's hitting something or not, right? So I'm shooting the raycast, and I'm using the ray that I've defined above, I'm storing all the information on what we hit uh, based on the on the container that we initialized above, and then I'm defining a range. So basically, I'm saying, well, um, I want this raycast to go maximum, you know, four or five meters in front, ten meters in front. You can define the range as as you prefer. Then I'm just playing a certain um, shooting sound, and finally, the most important thing is I'm invoking. The, the, the event which I defined above the on shooting event. So I'm basically invoking this event. Okay. So what, why am I doing this and what, what does it do? Well, if there is any other script listening to that event, then it can, uh, every time we shoot, it will pick up that we actually shot, right? That we actually shot at something. And uh, basically I'm invoking this event and I'm passing to this event, the hit information and the damage information, all right? Now, what happens is that um, if we go to our AI player interaction script, uh, we can see how we use the on-shooting um, event, basically. Um, what we do in this script is we basically subscribe one of our methods so this process hit methods method to the on shooting event. So basically what happens is that every time we shoot with our weapon, um, the process hit method will be called and it will be processed essentially. It will, it will, yeah, the, the function will be called. All right. Um, so this is the most important part. You don't have to do it with events. You can simply do it in, in any way you want, you know, uh, or you prefer. Um, <laughs> so you don't necessarily have to do all this thing with events. The most important thing is that, well, in, in this case, it's just you, you have, every time you shoot, you have to call this method, basically. That's the idea, right? So you can do it with if, if statements. You can do it however you want it. Uh, for me, it was best to do it with an event because it was a bit uh, cleaner. And I, I can actually subscribe... Uh, any other script or any other method to that on shooting event. So I, I'm basically the on shooting event is telling the whole game that I shot. So for, so it's easy to, um, subscribe anything to that event, you know, I, from any other script, essentially. Uh, but again, you can do it however you prefer. All right. So what we do is when we shoot, we call the process hit method. Now, what does the process hit method do? So as I told you before, uh, in this script, we handle the spawning of blood decals, so the bullet hole decals, and the blood effects, okay? So the process hit method does exactly that, okay? So how do we do it? Well, first of all, we want to check that the collider the, uh, that we hit, so the hit information that we retrieved from the on-shooting uh, event, basically, which is in turn in turn, passed on to the process hit method. We want to check that it's not no, right? So we want to check that we actually hit a collider, right? Did we hit a collider? Yes? Okay, perfect. Now, if we hit a collider, then we move on to the second part of the if statement. Now, this is something that you do not need to have, 
This is something that I'm just checking because I'm using the Emerald AI um, um, custom solution, which you can see up here, Emerald AI. This is a uh, AI solution that is that you can find on the Unity Asset, so Asset Store, and essentially it uh, it's it's a great solution for building AI essentially. Um, and this is what I'm using in my game for my enemies. Uh, so you don't need to have it. Um, so you you can actually skip this check basically. All right. Um, I have to, I'm doing it because I want to check that I'm hitting a limb from a um, of an enemy basically that that's why i'm checking this so you can actually you can forget about this part all right so if you hit the collider uh basically you can enter the if statement now in the if statement we go through this for each uh loop basically uh in this for each loop basically we say okay um for each layer inside this array the layers to ignore array we want to do some checks. Now, what is the layers to ignore? Basically, I made a integer uh, array uh, with a set of layers that they sh that should be ignored by the uh, well. Th th these these are just layers that should be ignored in general, right? Uh, when we want to spawn uh, blood effects, all right. Um, so basically, um, yeah. Uh, why would we want to ignore these layers? Well, because sometimes um, some things inside the uh, the actual game have uh, some other components or some other game object in the actual game have uh, colliders, and um, but these colliders might not be part of the enemy ragdoll. So, do we want to spawn blood, for example, if we hit, let's say, a uh, collider? on a gun on or on an object that is not the enemy no we don't want to spawn blood in this case so these those layers will go into this array all right so for each layer in the layers to ignore basically what what we're doing is we're checking and we're saying all right so does this layer uh, does the uh, does the um collider that we hit with our ray cast belong to one of these layers to ignore if if it doesn't then we can continue we can move on towards spawning the blood but if it does then we exit we return so we exit the process hit method basically and we do not spawn any blood all right this is what it's doing essentially that's all and it's something again that is it's not compulsory you can you can have it in your game or you, you might not have it, all right? Uh, this part is also specific to Emerald AI, so I will skip it. Uh, you don't need to have it. Uh, basically, the only thing I do here, if you're interested, is I assign um, different damage based on the limb that I'm hitting with my gun. So, for example, if I hit the legs, uh, I will assign a certain damage, but if I hit the head, I will assign a higher damage. Uh, but this is something again specific to Emerald AI, and it's not required for. It's not really, yeah, specific to this tutorial. Then this is the part that is most interesting for for you guys, and it's really simple to be honest. There is nothing really difficult about it. Um, basically, here I do two different things. In this first part, I spawn the um, bullet holes that are attached to the enemy mesh, and in this second part. I spawn the blood effects that are not atta attached to the enemy mesh, but they are just blood that is spilling off from the enemy um, uh, injury point, let's say, hit point. And then these blood effects, they end up on the ground, all right? So how do we do this? Well, I'm using an object pooler, so you don't have to use an object pooler yourself. You can just grab the instance of the, uh, of the blood uh, decal. Um, and then what I do is I set the parent of the blood decal to the transform of the collider that the raycast just hit. Then I set the, the blood decal to active. Um, and um, because in my case, I don't have to instantiate because I'm using an object pooler. 
So it's already in game. The blood decoy is already in game and it's not active. So I just have to activate it instead of instantiating it. But you might have to instantiate it if you're using, if you're not using a, a pooling system. Um, then I set the position of, um, of the blood deco uh, to exactly the hit point. So the position where we hit the enemy. And then I define a scale, a random scale of the blood decal. So sometimes the blood decal might be large, sometimes it might be small, but the whole idea is that uh, it's not always the same. So we got a bit of variety, essentially, every time we spawn a blood decal. Then I define a random rotation of the decal, again, to increase a bit the variety. And finally, I assign the, the scale, the random scale that I, that I defined above, I uh, assign it to my blood deco, okay? And this is all you have to do for the um, blood deco, which, is, which remains attached to the enemy mesh. Now, for the blood effect, it's slightly different, but it's mostly the same. Again, what I do is, since I'm using an object pooling system, I grab the instance of the uh, blood effect, once I grab the instance of the uh, blood effect, basically what I do is I assign the uh, position of the blood effect as the point, the hit point, basically. So, um, yeah, that's what I do. But I do not assign uh, the parent. Why? Because the blood effect needs no parent. Why? Because it needs to be in the world coordinates and it needs to stay on the ground. It doesn't need to follow the enemy mesh, basically, once it is spawned. So I set the position uh, to the hit point, and I set the rotation as random, and then I set it to true. Uh, so once it is spawned, it will fall on the ground, uh, and it will essentially remain there, basically. So this is all this part does, all right? Uh, now, you don't have to worry about this last part, because this is something specific to my game, which is not really necessarily... Um, it's not necessarily uh, for your game. So again, this is specific to the Emerald AI system, basically. So uh, this is all it does. This is the whole script. It's not very long and it's relatively simple. Um, and um, yeah, so I think it's pretty easy to replicate it. Uh, it's nothing really advanced. Um, it's more about how you deal with the communication between the shooting and the blood decal uh, spawning. That that's I think that's mostly what it is about. So this uh, actually this uh, event um, this event system. Uh, otherwise, uh, the rest is fairly simple. It's just activating uh, game objects and uh, you know uh, defining uh, positions and rotations and uh, parents. But that's all. And grabbing instances of those objects. That's all really. Um, so guys, uh, thanks for um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time with a new video.